morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning, uh, Mr. Zhao. <laughs> Thank you to join us to our one Taiji Culture Week, a public lecture from the European Taiji Culture Communication Center. The European Taiji Culture Communication Center is a global network platform and provided the knowledge of the traditional Chinese culture, philosophy, medicine, and sinology. We are worldwide top master, masters in this field to give public lecture and courses. You are welcome, invite our friends and family together to join us to find the beauty of Chinese culture. My name is Xiang Yu from Germany and glad to today and uh, show our um, the fourth course of Yang Style 1737 Step of Tai Chi Quan from Master Zhao Youbin and his son Zhao Liang. Master Zhao Youbin is the fifth generation of Yang Style Tai Chi Quan. The lecture will be two parts. The first part is around one hour, 30 minutes of introduction of demonstration. The second part of a patient is accept a ceremony from four weeks of Master Zhao Youbin. Um, today lecture we record and the video be available later in our European Taiji YouTube channel. So now I will show you the video now. Please enjoy. Hello, I'm Zhao Youbin. I'm very happy to see you again. It is the fifth class of 37 form series of lectures today. The main topic for me to explain will be basic requirements for leg techniques. The step techniques or stance techniques include bow stance, backward stance, empty stance, horse riding stance, single leg stance, crouching stance, etc. All the above belong to basic leg techniques. Besides hand techniques, leg techniques are important basic movements for practicing Tai Chi Chuan well. I will explain its essentials in different classes. In previous lessons, we have already learned something about bow stance, front bow stance, side bow stance, and empty stance. Now, let's start with bow stance and front bow stance. But before introducing leg techniques, I will say something about how to practice Tai Chi Chuan well. Firstly, eliminate distraction and keep calm in your heart and mind. Secondly, relax all parts of your body. These two points are very important. Tai Chi Chuan is based on nature. So, all techniques of hands, eyes, body, and stance must all conform to natural laws of human motion. Especially for beginners, try to avoid exaggerated movements and too low postures. Never show off. We practice Tai Chi Chuan just like taking a calm, silent, and relaxed walk. When stepping out, don't intentionally take a large step, just stay natural. When forming a bow stance, don't intentionally have the body too low, just relax the whole body and practice Tai Chi Chuan naturally. That's okay. In time, you will be more and more familiar with the form, then the Tai Chi frame and postures will naturally be formed. This is the correct mentality and psychology for learning Tai Chi Chuan. For the beginner, everything must be natural. Never go after large steps. 
or low postures. Never go for looks. This is our basic mentality and see quality. I would like to emphasize the basic requirements for bow stance, which Zhao Liang already explained in his lecture. As for bow stance, the body must face straight ahead. What is the width between both feet? In the form preparation, the width of the feet is the same as that of the shoulders. This is called Kai Bu, feet apart. Let's take this as the standard for the entire form. Now, for example, let bow stance swing the right toe 45 degrees to the right and step up straight forward with the left foot. Now, the width should be okay. In both brushing knee and twist step and parting the horse's mane, we have front bow stance and we use the above method to get correct width. Never put feet on a straight line, which will cause instability of lower part of the body. Of course, there is exception for the width of your stance. For example, in the form single whip, the width is relatively narrow. So, for a correct front bow stance, we start with kaibu, feet apart. Just swing the back tiptoe rightward and step forward with the left foot. Then, we get the proper width. Never have the feet on a straight line or much wider than normal, with exception of oblique step. As for the angle of two feet, generally the back foot is at 45 degrees, but it is not an absolute requirement. It is allowed that it is a little inward or a little outward. But the front foot must be pointing dead ahead. It is not allowed that you swing the tip of the toe even a little outward. That would dissipate the power, the force. We would rather rotate it a little inward than swing it outward. We may rotate the foot inward to about 10 degrees, but not oblique like this way. That would be side bow stance. So for a front bow stance, be sure to have the tip of the toe forward. Try to avoid turning the toe outward. The bow stance like this is wrong. The front foot must be straight ahead and the back foot must be around 45 degrees. The front foot and the back foot form an angle of less than 90 degrees. This is the correct stance shape and width of the front bow stance. As for the length of the stride, I have told you not to go after large steps. You should step up as far as you can. The second one to note is the leg and the knee. For bow stance, if the stance shape is okay, please attention to the knee. From front view, the leg must not be inward, and the knee should be facing to the tip of the toe, or even more, outward, so as to get increased stability. From the side view, for a correct front bow stance, the position of the left knee should be between the tip of the toe and root of big toe, or even more, perpendicular to the heel. This is an effective and comfortable range for a front bow stance. But it is not good if the knee is over the tip of the toe because the force would be shifted forward. For example, in the front brushing knee in twist step, the knee must be here, but now it is over 
the weight is shifted forward. The result is that the force of front leg and back foot would be weakened. The force feeding between two legs would be weakened. So the force for the pushing palm would be reduced. From side view, it is allowed that the knee is vertical to the heel or at the most reaches the tip of the big toe, never over the tip toe. This is the very important. If the knee goes over the tip toe for a long time when practicing Tai Chi Chuan, the knee joint would be more stressed and very possible would suffer sports injury. For a front bow stance, the back leg should be extended. But to what extent is the back leg extended? We say it must not be too strict or too bent. Too bent means not enough power. The force of palm pushing relies on the knee joint of the back leg. The knee joint must be extended for releasing power upwards and downwards, and at the same time stretch out the palm. All depends on the power exerted by the back leg. If the back leg is too bent, too soft, we cannot obtain enough penetrating force. We should try to extend it, but extending it does not mean straining it too much. The leg too much strained makes it like a rigid stick without any curve. Then the force is cut off. It will be stiff, not alive. It is not allowed. Then how should we correctly extend the leg? We must try to find out the sensation of movement and the correct feeling of power. Firstly, extend the back leg and push it back. Now, relax all muscles of the hip and the knee joints. That's okay. This is just like stretching the arm. Firstly, we stretch the arm out. Then we relax it. The result is that the tension is removed and the natural curve is formed. So you see, it is the same for the leg. The leg cannot be bent, which reduces power. It cannot be too straight, which makes the leg rigid. What is the right degree of curvature? Just extend the leg and relax the joints of the hip and the knee, removing the tension and keeping alive the force inside the leg. The above is the leg shape and fixed posture in static state. This bow step is a fixed form. The side view is also a fixed form. A form for leg technique. As for the foot and the leg, what are the key points that we show master? Firstly, the force must start from the feet. In Tai Chi Quan practice, we say, the force is rooted in your feet, powered by your legs, that is knees, controlled by your waist, and finally expressed through the fingers and the palms. That is, the power starts from your feet to your legs and then onward to your waist. Everything should be coordinated and integrated like one unit. Just like when you press the power button, the light comes on. It is integral. We should feel its layers, its transmission and its force. During our practice in Tai Chi Chuan, we should have sports thinking, which produces a kind of perception on your own motion. We call it sense movement. 
I taught you in former lessons to form a bow stance. At the beginning, generally the weight is at the back leg, but when you step up, the force goes forward from the foot. First, the sole of the foot must have enough power, enough force of pushing back for transmission. You must feel movement of the force. It is not floating. We should feel power, a force produced from the foot. It is just like the start of a race. The runner bends his knees and squats, places his back foot on the pedal. An instantaneous power is sent out by the knee joint and the sole of the foot. For example, a bow stance in the form brushing knee in twist step. We must think and feel that the back foot gives pressure to the earth and transmits the power. This is one point. Second, the knee joint has both an upward and downward power. It is elastic, just like an arrow on the bow string. We subconsciously extend the bent knee joint to release a force to shoot the arrow. We should have such a feeling of movement. The movement depends on the opening and closing of the knee joint. When we are forming a bow stance, besides the change of the force feeling of the foot, there are also changes of the knee joint from bending into extending, which produces one downward force and one upward force, providing force to spread the body forward. When we practice slowly, we should try to feel changes of such force and changes of opening and closing. When we spread the leg from its bending state, it must have a narrow shooting force. Next, we will see the active movement. It is not right that the leg is floating forward. And where is its released force now? Of course, it reaches to your hand. For getting such a result, the front leg must be powerful. The front leg must catch the force released by the back leg. What would happen if the force of the back leg is not caught? The back leg springs up and the front knee joint by itself bows and protrudes out, distracting the power. The power is floating. When we are making a bow stance, the force surely comes from the back leg then through the hips, the crotch between the hips, then onto the front leg. The front leg must catch the force, and the front hip must be relaxed at the same time. The knee joint, the foot, and the tailbone form a relatively stable triangle. This triangle, knee joint, only at this angle, the front leg may catch the force transmitted by the back leg. If it is here, the force of the back leg would be distracted. If you still need to step up, you should bend your leg more for the next forward step. Now, after a fixed posture, you need to practice next brushing knee into a step. You may move your knee joint forward furthermore. During the process of changes of advancing and retreating. We should also clearly feel changes of solidness and emptiness. For a correct bow stance movement, the hip must be relaxed and the knee joint must not be over the tiptoe. Then the front leg is able to stably catch the force from the back leg. Then the force is transmitted to the arm by the waist and hips. The function of the back leg is for pushing off and the front leg is for bracing. This is a concept. Another important concept is that 
we walk with two legs, and that advancing and retreating depend on two legs. It is the couch between the hips that coordinates and adjusts solidness and emptiness and changes of the legs. For example, when we push off the back leg, the front leg must be powerful for bracing. There is a distance between two legs, just like a bridge. The crotch integrates power, solidness, and emptiness of the legs. With movement of the crotch, the weight is gradually moving forward, and the bow stance is little by little being formed. Meanwhile, the crotch is being opened. Thus, both legs are powerful. At this point, 70% of weight is on the front leg. Here, 50, 50. Now, move forward. The front leg has 70% of the force. In terms of distance, 70% of crouch force moves forward from the back leg. At such a ratio, the crouch force is able to adjust and integrate the force of the legs. It is just like a bridge supported on both piles. The piles are the legs of the bridge. So, performing a bow stance, we must feel that the force of the back leg is exerted by the foot and that we try to brace the front leg and meanwhile spread the knee joint. The front leg must be stable to catch the force from the back leg. This is the complete process for the bow stance movement. Solidness and emptiness of the legs is very clear and the legs are powerful. So, as beginners, when we start to practice stepping forward and bowing step, bow stance, we should pay attention to the coordination and integration of our foot power, knee joint movement, and hip joints as well. It is important that we understand the changes of the leg force. There are still other changes for leg techniques. That is all for the bow stance today. Next class, we will explain some movement skills concerning empty stance, retreating stance, and side stance. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Chen 同时摆左脚
，左手继续向左后方展出两手，圆抱，展开，提右腿，然后右腿向后撤步，左手收至耳旁，右手掌心朝左，二，重心后移，右手平带，左手顶胸前下按，同时抬左腿。三，屈膝下蹲，折身，由腰推肘，肘推外，向前下插下去。左屈步，脚跟要虚，脚掌落地。再来一遍。海底针，左手展开，背部要圆。动作要连贯，速度要均匀，手脚要协调。注意折身下去，不要弓背，不要弯背。屈屈下坐，坐稳，眼随手方向向前看。右背内旋，左手负腕，身体长起，重心后移，起左脚，向前迈出一步，然后左手前推，右手微向后拉开，左手高于肩起，右手掌心朝外，与太阳穴起。左腿重心不变，脚尖内扣，两手顺时针抱球，同时抬右腿向右后方撤出，先以脚跟落地，然后重心不变，摆脚尖朝外，朝八字步，然后随弓步，两手前后分开，同时左脚尖内扣。再来一遍，斜飞式，后脚，两臂圆转，抬右腿，撤步，然后开胯，然后弓步，两手分开，右手依右脚起，左手下踩，注意，左手肘不要屈，不要过背。要顺缘。This time, we still stay with the 37 style beyond Tai Ji Chuan. Last lesson, we learned the first arm to the elbow is a big turning movement of holding tight back to the mountain. Four 
arm rolling from both sides, follows the fist on the elbow, is a backward walking action, just like rush knee and twister. It's also a continuous back stir. It's also left and right movement. They are symmetrical. In 37 style, it's only one and a half. Forearm rolling from both sides follows fist on the elbow. After first one, the second one, taking half a step away, turns into the needle at the bottom. However, in the traditional 8-5 style, we can do it for 3 or 5. In the demonstration just now, I have do 3. Rush knee and twister in the previous nursing, we know is an at one stir with both things. The purpose is to practice stability of Tai Chi Chuan. Stability here doesn't mean that moving forward at constant speed is okay. Instead, keep your head, shoulders, and hips moving in parallel when moving forward. It's not now to change from vertical to real. Let's go over brush knee twister. One, swing the foot. Two, turn the wrist and lift the knee. During lifting, keep wrist and crawl stable. Not standing up. Kneel down or lean back to one side. Unbalance shoulders and top of her just because of lifting leg. Practicing the stability of the body and keep the her shoulder and hip moving in parallel. Keep moving forward, practice continuous strings of Tai Chi Chuan with solid turning of legs and feet. In both stands of this action, push the back leg and the front hand with strings from the foot to the palm. Pass through necks, waist, hip, shoulder, elbow, and hand. Zao Lian Hao is opposite of Lou Xi Ao Bu. It's to lift the knee and then pull the neck back. Transfer the power from the front leg to the back one. Until to hand through the waist and legs. It takes step backward as forward. The direction of transmitting power is opposite to low xi ao bu. But its function is the same. While step backward, keep her shoulders and hips flat, just like low xi ao bu. First demonstration in the normal direction. One. Left palm upward, while right hook into palm. Two, with the gravity backward, turn body to right. A turn right hand backward, and lift to shoot navel, eyes on the right hand, lift knee. Three, bend your right elbow, stir back. Left four foot touches ground. Four, heel knee, right leg pushes, 
move the gravity back, turn bar to nerf, while push right hand forward from the air and take left hand back to a nerf crotch. Look again in another side. The first move, turn nerf palm upward, turn right hook into palm. At the same time, relax the left foot and put foot on the ground. The second move, the gravity backward, spread right hand, lift the left nerf, eyes on the right hand. The third, bend the right elbow, step backward, left forefoot on the ground slightly and can still lift. Then put the foot down, drive right nerve, turn nerve, shift the gravity backward, push right hand forward and draw the left hand to the left hip with the palm faces up and look ahead. This is side view. We'll have back view again. One, two, three, four, we have four actions. This is next step backward. Take the next action. Right step backward is in the same way. First, turn the front palm upward. Second, sit back, turn left, lift the right nerve, spread the left hand flat to the shoulder level and eyes on the left hand. Third, bend the left elbow, step back with right foot. Front foot touches the ground lightly. Weight backward. Withdraw the right hand and push the left hand forward. Back of the tip of the left foot inward. Strengthen and face the front. Next two is the same. One, open arm, lift hand. Two. Bend elbow, step back, three, sit back, and push your palm. Turn it around and do it again. One, right palm upward, left hand spread, lift knee, step back, bend your elbows, sit back, and push your palm. Keep working like this. Pay attention to the following tips in this action. One hand spread. Don't strengthen your hands forward when turning. Whether the left hand is in front or the right hand is in front. When turning the hand, keep elbow bent and heavy. And the back side of the hand means Downward pressure. Second, run opening the lower hand. Don't up the shoulder, whether changes from feet on the elbow or rolling arms on both sides. Back the elbow, spread shoulder, the fingers unfold, and two palms of two hands turned inward, as if holding the big four. Front hand is right hurt. The angle between the back hand and the front hand is slightly more than 19 degrees. Don't overextend or turning with too much. A little more than 19 degrees is enough. Next, arms bent while taking the elbow back. Keep the arm picked wrong. Don't curl the upper arm downward to make the space of arm pace smaller. Keep your arm piece enough space, the same as low she elbow, the palm faces the ears. The hand pushes forward from the ear side. 
sink shoulder, drop elbow, see through wrist, uko, faces your shoulder socket. When the front hand moves backward, use your elbow to bring the front hand back. Press no hands back, downward with sinking force. After step back, the back elbow cannot exceed your back. That's all about hands. On the ground, this sitting stirred. As for the gravity, point seven in back, point three in front. When gravity is sitting on the right leg or lifting the left leg, rotate your body towards the solid leg. Your hips tucked in and wrist bent. Relax your front leg enough. Lift the neck directly from the ground by bending knees and waist. Try not to lift your feet up again, or pull your feet back up again. The upper body also be light sitting on the stool as much as possible, and keep upright. Do not lean back because of leg lifting. As for step back, when you lift your neck to take step back, pay attention to back. I'm taking a step back. Don't twist your neck together. Second, not too wide. Cross wide stirred. When sitting, if the space between left and right is too big, the power scattered. Lift your knees, open your hips, pull your feet back, and bend diagonally. Drop your feet on the ground, and then lower your heels. The distance between two feet after stepping back and learning should be well controlled. Another thing here, when doing this posture, your toes point to hurt. Lift your knees and step back. Pay attention to the front foot, which is just backward. Toes outward. Sit the back foot back. Tiptoe straight to hurt with the bar turning to the nerve. Finally, form the posture. Take heel as the axis. Put the tiptoe right. That's all of this movement. In the practice, Lo Xi Ao Bu and Dao Lian Hou can often be put together as a basic skill or footwork of Tai Chi Chuan. Practice more. For stability of the forward and backward to build up the waist and nerves, light and flexible stirs, like cat walking smoothly and softly, like the flowing water of the Yangtze River. Compare these two movements, you will find that they are very similar. Take the right hand as example. Spread the right hand down. Bend elbow back. Move the leg forward. Bow spine. Push palm, which is low shi out. Open your hand. Bend your elbows. Step back. Sit back and push forward. That is. They are almost the same. Practice them together. For example, Lo Xi Ao Bu. Keep walking forward, sitting back. Dao 
笑脸猴。Stood back, practice continuously and repeatedly. This is a very good way to improve the basic level of Tai Chi Quan for beginners. In thirty-seven style, don't do so much; just one enough. Next action: hand open, knee lift. Half step back. Get the next action: needle at C button. It's a full work of continuous backward with several sitting stirs. There are two body methods, about forward and backward, which can be used as contrast and reference while practicing. Next act: needle at the C button. Follows Dao Lian Hou is a little vivid. Bow down, insert one hand forward, knife needle, and crop downward. We need to focus on its connection way from Dao Lian Hou to Hai Di Chen. After the first rolling forearm. If you doing, turn the front palm upward, move weight backward, turn waist and left knees, and spread left hand out. Special attention here. If keep doing, taking the left stir backward, while bending the left hand back, the right foot takes half stir backward. A left elbow bent back with palm face the ground. Put insert and brush knee aside. Let's see how it change. Palm upward, hand unfold. Bend left elbow with step backward. That is the same, but here right foot only take half step back. The left hand covers down from the chest. At the same time, bend the right elbow. Rotate arm. The palm faces left. Pull the left hand back to your right chest. Right hand is in front of the right shoulder, and lift nerve. Go in this way. Now, front view. Rolling forearm on both side, half down. Take half stir. Cover the left hand and bend the right elbow back. From here on. Step back. Right hand turning, left hand spread, and lift knee. That's the same. Half step back, cover the left hand, bend the right elbow back, lift the nerve, and then drop the foot. Now take back view. Faster backward. Shift the weight to the right. Turn right and lift left knee. Up it. Drop forefoot and then brush knee downward. This is the joint change from Dao Lian Hou to Hai Di Chen. Bend left elbow. 
not to the ear sign, but to the truth. From palm turn to the nerves. Read the thumb. Put right hand back, flatly, but loosening the shoulder, dropping the elbow, loosening the wrist, with the five fingers always point forward. And the little finger side downward with the meaning of parting. Now let's come to needle at C button. Lean forward and throwing right hand forward and downward. This action is different from the ones we learned before. They see the first actor to lean forward and look down. One more thing. Do you pay attention to this learn? Also sit here and take half step forward up the front for twice. This is the end step we learned before in So Hui Pi Pa. Learn with your heels. Hai Di Cheng is also an M step. The front foot should give the body a support to maintain stability because of bending downward. First, the forefoot landing is a good support for the body. Second, on the basis of support, the front leg will not become stiff. And front foot landing can make the knee joint, ankle joint, and hip joint more relaxing. The bending down of the body, elastic and changeable. That is the difference between Hai Di Zhen and So Hui Pi Pa. All are for technical purpose and power structure. In the normal direction, there must be support when you lean down. So you need to gently stick the front foot to the ground and put it on the ground. Also landing slightly and can be nifted at early time without weight when turning to the nerve. Pull back the crotch. Lean forward. Keep your back smooth and don't bend your back. Rolling your left hand back while turning like the white cream spreads its wings and the palm sunk. Stop at your left knee while leaning down. Relax your right hand and your fingers obliquely down naturally. This is from demonstration. Now let's turn around and have a look. One, then the left foot. Second, draw an arc with left hand around the knee till stop at your left knee. Right hand leans forward as body turns and is turned diagonally downward. The angle between the arm and the ground is 45 degree. Sit with the left palm when bending down. Not only your back should be smooth, but also your neck shouldn't be bent. The whole top should pass through like a hunch. With your hips rolled in and your back pulled up. Make your body lean down and forward. And you're all the way backward. One, forward, the other, backward. To keep your body stable and the gravity not too much forward. Demonstrate it from the back.
The key to this movement is to keep your back smooth, also the neck. Look ahead and down naturally as you lean forward. That's the point. The second, when you lean forward. Transfer your weight forward about turn to thirty percent, the same as other arm stirrups. But when you press forward, you should pull your crotch and waist back, so we can keep the body stable, and the head, the front hand to press and insert. All about this explanation of Heidi Chen. Now next, we have another new action: a twelve, San Tong Bei. Flash the arms. Follows Heidi Zhen. Heidi Zhen needs to bend down, but San Tong Bei to hang up. Stand up. Step forward, and punch. The shoulders open and hands pass through, just like opening traditional Chinese fang. San Tong Bei is a simple action. It is a forward lunge. While pushing the palm forward, that is, bow stance and punch. The back hand holds the wrist. Meanwhile, the front hand pushes. We call it San Tong Bei, which is the little symbol. Let's look at elder first. First move. Move upward. Turn right. Take right hip in rotated body to the right, and stand upright. Pull the right elbow back. Open the armpit. Rotate the arm. Now the first move. Palm facing down to the right chest level. Left hand aims at right wrist. At the same time, the body turns to the right, till to the upright form. The second move, keep moving gravity back, turning to the right, lifting the right hand. Left hand aims at the right hand wrist and means to follow. Two hands up to the right forehead. Neville, lift your left nerve. Step forward. Heel falls. First, then bow stance. Drop the left elbow. Sink the wrist. Up palm and push forward. Knowledge and skills of Tai Chi Chuan directly from. Palm and push forward while pushing your right hand back. One in the front, the other behind, forming an open posture. That's a right view. Now next, the viewing from side. One. Lift up. Put your hands together on your right chest. Two. Keep way backward. Turn right with lifting legs. Three, stoop forward. The heel knees. Four, lunges with sitting left palm. Drop elbow and sit wrist. Then push out. Shoulders outward. Elbow pulled back. Your right hand back to the right ear side. Left hand pushes down, 
to finger points to the front. And fingertip is same narrow as your brow to the nose tip to the front. And from back, here is the basic practice. Now pay more attention to the following tips. Body shape. Hai di zheng. Turn wrist to the left. Keep body flat. That is, the body faces front. San tong bei. Get up with right turning. To the right side. Then keep turning your waist and lift your knees sideways. Also the body. If you take a look at the camera, you will find that you can see little about the side. Remember to step sideways, not turning around while stepping up. Note when stepping forward in lunge. Just forming lunge, avoid turning your waist while lunging. And finally, return your almost to straight ahead. Now, San Tong Bei turns your body to the right. Turn right again, step sideways, lunge forward, push your palm sideways, open your shoulders and elbows, push your hands forward to match your right hand. Spread crouch to the left and right, hold upright. The whole waist and tail bone relaxed. Hands part way to both sides and have a round back. Two hu kou match. The right hu kou is on the right ear side. Left hand in front of the rose is very similar to the single whip. Single whips also pulled back and forth. But the left hand goes out, the right wrist backward. San Tong Bei. Elbow and shoulder is pulled out to meet front hand. The two backs and shoulders must be pulled forward and outward to form a circle. Not backward, like the opening fang. Not be folded outward, form a sages and crisis shape. No power in nerve. Now keep in mind, step up sideways, also the hand shape. While getting up, left palm faces left. Rotate the forearm. Palm turns down. Then keep lifting up, with arm rotating to the right. The whole palm turns 180 degrees, rotate entirely, not lift arms up like this. It's not the arm rotation. Shoulders and elbows opened, just like pulling something out of the ground with him in a rotatory way. Twisting it to work. Next, forward, pen, aim at right wrist. Put on the surface. Seems to be and seems not to be. People do it like this, which is wrong. Going out, drop the elbows, sinking the wrist as well. One side of the little finger face from, carving with a knife or an axe. Show directly. See its basic practice and the main point of San Tong Bei. Next, let's go on the thirteenth act. Xie Fei Shi, obliquely flying, which follows San Tong Bei. Here it is when turn body to one side, spread hands out with the body around turning. Like two wings, shaking arms and flying high. When you see this action, maybe think it is also turning back action. 
compared with the previous turning actor like single we. It turns from the right bouncer by buckling the foot teamwork and then raises the knee to step up. Making a big change in the body. Now we have another turning way. Called with Joel Stir. Follow the change of single V. Turning waist, lifting knees, up turning, up knees with the direction you want to stay up. Turn around. This is general lunge. This move is uh, with Joel Stir. Looking at it from the right side. One, buckle the left foot inward as much as possible over 19 degrees. Turn hands up and down as holding the ball. Lifting right nerd. Curl, not turn your wrist. The right foot pull down diagonally and forward. Directly heel lens. Now move the gravity halfway to the right. Right foot outward obliquely. Keep both stands. Continuous turning right. Buckle the right foot. Extend the right hand upward. And press the left hand downward. About less than 45 degrees to the right applicate direction. Now let's take a look again. Focus on hands actions, then with dual stir. First, back view first. Buckle your feet, turn hands wrong, hold the board, sit in your hips. And lift your knee, keep point here, not turn your body when taking the stir. Foot hook it, heel extend, and diagonally, then touch the ground. Then move your way to the right. Swing your feet down, and put your toes diagonally in front. This is front view. There is the angle in the middle. Less than 45 degrees. In half gravity, move the gravity continuously. Buckle left foot, turn wrist, wrap hips, buckle the left foot, and then separate the hands to both sides. That's from view. Slightly to the right. All the bodies obliquely flying direction. We have learned how to retreat from two directions. Go ahead to explain how to walk with two hands. Follow the San Tong Bei. Take carefully up and down with two hands. Draw a circle as if you are driving. Turn a big steering wheel. With right hand down and left hand up. When up your right foot and leg, curls two hands to the middle. What is principle of closing? Protect each other. The right hand aims at the left elbow, and the left hand crosses towards the right elbow, which forms a hunk. Holding the board when the back foot turns wrong. The back be relaxed. As hand falls outward, the shoulder be relaxed. The elbow be opened. The hand lifted by the fingers upward. Relax whole arm. Not be carried down by the shoulder turn over. Instead, but the fingers with an arc. Draw circle upward. Lift the knee, bend elbow, and hold the board.
sparkle feet. Lift knees and hold the board up down. Meet your elbows in front of you. After the next back stroke, for example, your feet have been pressed in order. Care of a lot. The no hand will be the right hand when two hands apart. Turns to the right. The whole arm spread it out, guarded by your thumb from left to the right, and draw the circle with your hand. The right hand is the same height as your shoulder. And the side of little finger is on the outside of your right nerve. The hand flies up obliquely. Thumb leads the whole arm to the toes outward. And the fourth point is at the thumb side of the right wrist. The left hand turns right with the body at this position. Press left hand to the nerve obliquely. Palm root thinks and draws an arc outward, near to the left hip slightly away. The five fingers point outward obliquely. Now, when the hands spread down, the shoulders must be pulled apart. The back be wrong, and hand be in the wrong way. In this position, this action should be driven by the wrist to form two arcs. Now I'll do it again at the end. From back view, wrap hips and back curled feet. Sit down on the hips. Up knees. Be careful not to turn your waist. Once turning your waist, it's easy to get big gap. Up knees, step back, shift your weight, swing your foot, and then get long. Wrap your hips, buckle your left foot slightly inward, and part your hands in the wrong way. This is practice of. Blickly flying. Now in this lesson, we learned four actions: rolling forearm on both sides, needle at C button, flash the arms, oblique flying at the end of course. Now please follow me to practice in normal direction and back direction. Start with the fist on the elbow, rolling forearm on both sides. Needle at C button. Flash arms. Applic flying. Not side view. All above is the demonstration of the four movements.
Now, so much for today. Thank you. 好的，非常感谢啊。Uh, thank you very much for Mr. Zhao and Zhao Yuan. Um, does everybody has question about this um for demonstration of the form ten to form thirteen? Um, everybody, 请问到检后退步时，呃，是先把脚向后撤，还是先稍稍的转弯再撤步？嗯、呃，赵老师，您在吗？可以回答这个问题吗？啊，能听能听到吗？能不能听到？赵老师好，啊、嗯，啊，你说，嗯嗯、呃，刚才有那个老师问，嗯、呃，老师问那个到颈后退步时是先把脚向后。还是先稍稍的转腰再撤步，啊不不不，呃不能转腰，呃先撤步，嗯，先撤步，好的，呃不能转腰，在脚没有落地之前，身体是稳定的，是不能够向左转的，好的，嗯，啊这样虚实分清楚，做到虚实分清楚，啊，好的，嗯。嗯，啊，看大家还有什么问题？呃、啊，有问题可以提。这个练拳的时候，前进后退，虚实要分清楚。刚才那位同学问的问题，就是虚实分清楚的问题。呃，如果在你退步的时候。身体就开始向后转，这个时候你的平衡性就会得到受到影响，所以在撤步的时候，身体是稳定的，重心是往前压的，压在前腿的四腿上。等脚尖着地了，感到底下呃有实实在的感觉的时候，再一层一层的向后退，向左转，嗯。嗯，好的，非常感谢赵老师。嗯、呃，大家还有什么问题吗？你可以开麦自己，可以也可以自己讲。嗯，是现在不知道同学们呃学这个套路有没有学的，学会了没有？<笑> Does everybody have learned? Uh, the form we have learned from uh, one to ten now, and uh, today is form thirty. Does everybody have uh, do access of this? <laughs> have some have do access about this? This, uh, exercise development, uh, body health. 是靠日积月累的。我们每月只讲一次课，每次才一个小时。在这一个月期间，所学的东西，呃，要经常练啊，天天要练。这样子的话，熟能生巧，功夫渐增，啊，就增加了，动作就就会慢慢好起来啊。So every every day one uh one excess and continue it will be. Be the success. <laughs> you can learn more. <laughs> 有了这个三十七式的这样的基础呀，呃，将来以后有条件的话，可以进一步学习呃原著啊，这个杨成虎的定型拳架八十五式，就学起来就比较容易了。嗯。So if you, uh, this is a simple form of the 85 forms. So this is basic. If you can do x square and you can also do the Mr. Yang Cheng Fu, Yang Tai Ji original <laughs> style. 
，三十七世呢就是一个基础啊，呃，要达到一个更好的呃传承效果、练习效果，还最后还是要学学传统的八十五式，他一遍演练下来，呃，二十五分钟啊、呃，连续两遍，呃，五十分钟，这样子效果就比较好，感觉也比较舒服。Uh, so Mr. Yang Chengfu has uh 85 Yang Si, um is will take um 25 minutes for one uh one for so it's take two times will be 30 minutes and will be very uh helpful for Yang Si <laughs> so Tai Ji Chen will be fine. With the 35 uh, cell, it's the basic. Okay. 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 Okay, now uh, we will, um, if you have some time, you can, we can also watch uh, the, the second part of a petition, a safety ceremony from the four weeks of Master Zhao Yubin. Accepting ceremony. A. Mr. Zhao Yubin with Master's Commandments. I am the fifth generation of young family. Tai Ji Quan. My father, Zhao Bin, inherited knowledge and skills of Tai Ji Quan directly from Yang Cheng Fu, the third brother of my maternal grandfather. When I was seven years old, I started to learn Tai Ji from my father. At the age of 16, I started to understand its connotation and to teach Tai Ji Quan that popularity of Tai Ji lovers and their followers has been continuously growing is really a great blessing for young family Tai Ji Quan. In 1993, Zhao Bin set Master's Commandments for accepting disciples. As time passes by, in 2006, the commandments were slightly modified. I hope all of us understand them, keep them in heart, and take them as cause of our behavior. We shall abide national laws. It is our duty to work for national and human health and for strengthening our country. We must abide the commandments for regulations for passing on skills and know-how, that is, five yes, five no. Five yes, passing on to those who have the following five conditions. One, who is loyal and graceful. Two, who is calm and peaceful. Three, who obeys the rules. Four, who respects the teachers. Five, who is persistent in learning. Five, no, not passing on to those who have the following five conditions. One, who is unfaithful and unfilial. Two, who is lack of sincerity. Three, who is ungracious. Four, who is crude and crash. Five, who is not serious in learning and likes showing off. B, representative of new disciples. Read the disciple acknowledge letter. Dear Mr. Zhao Yubin, I'm Ji Guoqin, a student from Jinan, Shandong province. The fate let me attach 
to Taiji to meet you and to enjoy the charm of authentically inherited Taiji Chuan. Thanks to our meeting, thanks to Taiji. The first time that I encountered 85 form Taiji Chuan was taking part in your courses held by the World Taiji Web. I was deeply uh, attracted by your splendid, precise, and uh, meticulous teaching. Important and key points were clearly explained. In August of the same year, I took part in your offline in courses in Xi'an. It was a new start for me that I used to practice competition routines only. I was deeply touched by both your online and offline teaching. With your playing words, and hands-on training, you explained in detail and clearly integration of theories and techniques, unity of opposites, opening and closing of yin and yang, ba fa wu bu, eight hand scales and five steps, etc. During the study, I feel my progress and fall in love with traditional Tai Chi Quan. Later, I took part in courses held online, and then the offline training in Binzhou and Zibo. For learning traditional Tai Chi Quan, we need to feel and understand it slowly. We need to practice and hone, of course, with instructions of the master. I shall keep in mind your instructions, that is, persistence, concentration, and no arrogance. I hereby apply for being your disciple. C. Speech by representative of veteran disciples, Zhang Bailin. It is my honor to attend Master's acceptance ceremony today. Thank you, Shifu. Firstly, congratulations to our Master on accepting new disciples, which means the growth of Zhao family's young style Tai Chi Quan. Being a referrer, it is my duty to recommend qualified recruits as new disciples or inheritors. This time, I recommended three excellent people. I have my own requirements for recommendation. First, he or she must practice and really like Tai Chi Chuan. Second, he or she must have good moral quality. Third, he or she really respects our master and eager to learn from him both in Tai Chi Quan and in good behavior. Here I would like to mention Li Hongyu, who was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis at the age of 16 years old. We know that it is a disease worse than death. When he started to learn Tai Chi Quan, he was at his worst state, tossing and turning in bed, which nearly making him lost face in life. In 2018, he took part in the training course of 85 form Yang style Tai Chi Quan, organized by the local Disabled Persons Federation and taught by Master Zhao Yubin. A few years later, there has been great improvement in his health, and now he is like a normal person. Besides, he has got a job and has started to teach Tai Chi Quan in this federation. It is Tai Chi Quan that has given him a new life. Thanks to Yang Zhao Tai Chi Quan.
。好的，嗯，赵老师非常好，嗯，大家看看有什么问题？刚才看到那个赵老师，嗯，拜师仪式非常激动。<笑> so it was very excited to see, um, uh, Mr. Zhao, the ceremony, um, of the 拜师。<笑>所以，如果你没有问题，我们会非常开心，来聆听和学习《泰姬》第十三种语言。今天，今天。And uh, thank you, Mr. Zhao and uh, Zhao Youbin and Zhao Liang, Master Zhao Youbin and Zhao Liang for the wonderful lecture. So, and also welcome to invite your friends and your family to enjoy our our one Tai Chi lecture a week. And the next uh, the next lecture will be held in four weeks. Now we have um, Christmas time and see you in New Year. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zhao. Thank you, bye-bye.